everyone. This is an overview of Twine. Now Twine, as this screen says, is an open source tool for interactive nonlinear stories. Um, this is something that's really cool to use if you are doing any sort of digital storytelling or anything where you want to showcase something in a nonlinear way. Now, Twine is a pretty simple tool to use. You don't necessarily need to know any coding to be able to use it, but it does get a lot more, um, it gives you a lot more capabilities if you do know a little bit of code um, to go with it. Now, the good thing about this is that Twine, since it is open source, has tons of documentation. And so if you're looking to get started, I would suggest going through uh, some of these examples, some of the um, testimonials and the the Twitter thread, and kind of taking a look at everything. The Twine Cookbook has um, some of its documentation there, and then if you just look up, um, you know, how-to guides on Twine, there's something for absolutely everything. So uh, make sure to check those out. But to get started with Twine, you've got your downloads up here, so um, you can download for Windows, Mac, or Linux, um, and you can uh, also just use it online, which brings up um, the, the same interface uh, just in your browser. So if you do this, then there's a few things that you should remember to do, which is first, um, make sure that you are signed in or uh, using the same browser that you used the first time. The browsers that work best are Chrome and um, and Firefox. If you're using Safari uh, or Edge, it makes downloading your files a little bit harder. Um, so just keep that in mind. So um, if you're doing that, uh, make sure you're doing that. And then also make sure that you are, just in case, um, publishing to file after every time you work on your story and that way you'll have a file a copy on your computer and so if uh, the internet eats it for any reason you can come over here to import from file and just import from the last time you um, you saved so these are our current most current uh, versions of twine you can use it online or if you're just really used to the old version, you can um, still download that there. So here we go with Twine, and I'm just gonna take you through the basics. And so we're gonna start over here and create a new story. So when you first come on to Twine, you'll see that there is a big pane that you can look at. I'm going to actually leave this in the middle here for a second. Um, so there are three views that you can use on Twine. This one shows you the title and a little bit of the text. Uh, this one in the middle just shows the passage with the title in it. And this one to the left shows only the overall structure. So when you start branching off. So when you start having big branches of stories, um, that's what that will look like. But we'll go back to this one for now. All right, so how do we get started? Double click on the passage. Now I usually name the first couple of pages something very, very basic. So as we go through this, I'll talk a little bit about file hygiene, but I usually name the first page title because I usually do some sort of graphic here. So I'm just gonna put in, oops. Put in that for now. Um, and then I'll do something um, that gives it the title of the of the game itself or the story itself. So up here is your toolbar. I just clicked bold. We're gonna just make the title bold, and we will say 
Okay, so that's gonna be bolt. Now, how do we make more passages? There's a few things that you can do. You can exit out and come down here to this plus passage and click it, um, and that'll make a new passage, or in the passage that you're currently working on, you can make links. And so, since this is the title page, I don't have a lot of options that I want the person to go to. I just want them to go to the beginning of our story. Um, and so, to create a link, you do opening brackets twice, and then closing brackets twice. It's hard to see, but it does turn blue, um, and that's how you know that you've made it uh, made a correct link. If you do something where the link is incorrect, it'll give you this yellow highlight. So there we go. So now we've created our first link, and our title page goes to create the first story. Sometimes I'll just have like a start button if it's kind of like more of a game situation that I'm trying to do, but you can just use the title if it's um, if you're displaying your research in a nonlinear way or doing something doing something else. But I've got my create the first story, so this is where we'll start to do things. And this is where I'll start giving my um, users options. And so we'll make a link that says, and you don't have to have the entire sentence in the link, so. So we've got one that says go to the store. In the background here, you can probably see that I now have a link with a little X. When I exit out of this, it'll go ahead and create the link for me. So our choices are go to the store and get ready for school. There we go. So we have our two options. And now it's made our two options that branch off. So a little bit on file hygiene. This is well and good um, for now, but if you're making something, if you're making a game or you're making something that requires a lot of different looks at a lot of your research, uh, things are going to get very uh, confusing <laughs> very quickly. So um, it's going to give you kind of that just automated uh, placement and location of your boxes, but when I first start, for my first option, I always do one to the side and then one up top, and they'll kind of grow together as you continue uh, to do this, but um, this kind of gives you a little bit of separation. The other thing to think about is what you're naming your passages, and so as you keep going, these first three, it's okay if you just kind of have basic titles like this. Um, but as you keep going, it's going to get more and more uh, difficult to um, keep these basic titles, especially because there might be a point in the far future over here where you can also go to the store, but it doesn't mean you want to go back to this part of the story. Um, so you can't just put store in there, you have to put something else. And so to do that and keep things organized, we continue our story and let's say our next, um, our next thing is, uh, okay. So we're checking out with our candy. But we can't, I don't want to just put candy on there, right? Because there might be candy in the future. Uh, that doesn't really tell me what is happening. So I'm going to put this vertical line here and space and then say store decision one. So what this does is, again, you can see it turned blue, and you can see that only store decision one turned blue in the brackets. And so what this does is it says, okay, I want this to the left to be a part of the narrative. I want this to be a part of what my reader sees. 
um, as they're doing this. And it says, I want this to the right to be what the box is actually named. So we've got two decisions that we can possibly make stemming from the part of the story that starts at the store. So store decision one, store decision two. All right. So the reason you can't just put in store decision one and you have to do the candy and the vertical bar and everything is because it does put everything in the actual passage um, if you don't have this vertical bar and so what this vertical bar does is it basically designates everything after it as the link um, rather than um, the all of the text that's in front of it and so if you have that then here's what it will look like here's your uh, toolbar for each passage you can play you can edit or you can delete the passage and then you've got more passage op options here uh, where you can do things. But for now, we're going to just, just play test this. All right, so here we have check out with your candy, steal the candy. So we don't have the store decision one and two uh, because that's been it's been told that that is just the link title. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about our tools. First of all, the overall tools for the um, software are down here. So right here, if you know a little bit of JavaScript or CSS, you can put things in that makes it a little bit fancier, but you don't have to know any of that to use this. Story format, I generally recommend just sticking with Harlow. Whatever the, um, the most recent version of Harlow is uh, because it will have the most documentation and this is the other place you can get to documentation to help you with um, with what you're doing but if you liked old Harlow better or if you want to do snowman or sugar cube it just changes the way that the um, that the story looks chapbook is kind of hard to play with uh, if you have if you're just beginning with this uh, if you've never played with it before but if you like kind of the more book look of um, twine then that's an option as well you can rename your story if you need to ever select your passages or snap um, also you can look at your story statistics um, and in uh, most importantly, this is where you will publish to file. So this is how you will save it at the end of every session if you are on the uh, online version of it, or when you're ready to actually host it, you can publish it here. And that finishes it. So let's go into store decision two real fast and just talk about um, some of these things. These buttons help you make elements in the passage. So these are gonna help you make links uh, for example this will help you do an if then um, passage so um, you can put in uh, the variables here um, this will help you input an element this will help you hook to another section of a passage a variable with a data value and uh, built-in macros so there's lots of different things that you can use and then these are just the regular text editing things like strike through uh, superscript this will let you change text and background color which some of you might like this gives you borders uh, this gives you rotated text so on and so forth and so you can use these um, but you can also do a little bit of code uh, and I'll go over that in the next video but you can do a little bit of code in the passage itself and uh, make things happen that way too so that is getting started with twine so remember our links look like these double brackets opening and closing our links with narrative text have the text to the left and the link text to the right. You will know uh, what the link text is because it turns blue. 
And that's about it. So go ahead and get started making your twine game. <laughs>